Hello everybody, welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I'm your host Tom Burrett and uh, we're back for episode 11 and I uh, thought today we would tie up uh, the series of um, episodes since episode 4 I believe that we've talked about some warm-up exercises and sort of outlaying sort of the foundational approach that I have to playing the instrument and um, sharing some of that with you. So, um, you know, in episode 10, if you haven't uh, watched episode 10, you need to watch that first before uh, the rest of this video because uh, what we talked about there um, it, it, it we're sort of building on. But we talked primarily about the, the, the permutation that we're going to use and then laying that out on the instrument in arpeggiation form, primarily in the keys of C, F, and G, uh, and, and F sharp as well. So, and we talked a lot about moving uh, with our feet and how we're going to not really step, but sort of lunge. Um, and so today we're going to continue along the same lines, talking about the other configurations. We also talked about... Um, approaching these with a circle of fifths, starting with F, going to C, going to G. And if we keep going, that leads us to D, A, and E, of course. And so we have an interesting challenge with these keys because we've got to uh, deal with doing this sort of movement on the keyboard to get the angles correct, in this case, of arpeggio D, F sharp to A. Um, and so I find that I don't like to put myself in this position unless I have to. And when we're not hitting both notes at the same time, there's no reason to, because we can do something that I call push and the pull. So uh, instead of attacking the D and the F sharp on this type of angle, we'll keep it square and actually push forward into the D. And if I work on this long enough, it's, it's difficult, but if I work on this long enough, I can get very consistent on, where, on hitting this F sharp here right on the edge of the bar. Okay, so uh, this is the push, and then the pull will occur here when I have to pull away from the S sharp to hit the A. This allows me to keep everything on this angle, much more power uh, and better accuracy as well. So I don't have to do so much of this chicken dance thing that I don't like to even watch if I'm watching someone play, and certainly don't like to do it when I'm playing. So, we're also considering how we move down here. You'll notice the shifts happen sort of quicker in this one. So an advantage of hitting these uh, in the circle of fist form is I can hit the same configuration and move exactly the same way with my feet, which is actually going to be a little bit different than uh, when I was doing CF and G arpeggios. So it looks like this. And then A, of course. from that, how I'm moving, how I'm um, uh, um, you know, not, uh, not allowing my body to get out of position. And if I didn't do that, let's just say, for example, if I didn't actually push and pull, then it would look probably more like this. And you can see the difficulty of that. And so this, really, uh, this concept really applies to a lot of our more contemporary uh, pieces where we're moving very, very quickly up and down the instrument. So uh, the most important thing is that we're thinking about moving this way, and we're also thinking about moving north and south. Okay, so if we keep going through these, I want to talk about one more thing, and that's the configuration of uh, D flat, A flat, and E flat. And there's a nice rule that I find works very well as far as when we're going to attack the edge of the bar, uh, as opposed to when we're going to attack just a little bit off the center in the upper manual. And generally, the rule for the rule that I use that works very well, just for, you know, not only for this. Uh, exercise, but for all the pieces I'll play, is this if I'm traveling between the manuals, I'll go ahead and hit the upper manual on the edge. So I can do the push and pull thing we just described. If I'm hanging out a little bit up here, like for D flat, for example, I'm going to pull away from the D flat to the F, and then just stay here, because these two notes are on the upper manual. And I'll, and I'll use that roll all the way up. Push, push, here I'm traveling, and then I'll stay was off camera a little bit there, but I think you understand what I'm getting at. And the same thing for A flat. Stay, push, push, travel, travel, stay. And so that, that works beautifully for these exercises, but for almost any piece you would play, it works equally as well. So there's quite a bit more to this exercise than what I've suggested, but I think I've hit the most important things. Uh, I find, uh, I think if you do that every day, I try to do it every day, and if I, if I don't do it, it ends up really hurting my playing. Um, I, but I think if you do it, it'll be developmental at first, and then 
you know, at some point it becomes maintenance of how you actually move and do all this on the instrument. So anyway, that's today's episode. Um, you can see I have the Butler School of Music. We have a, just gotten a, a, a very large gift last spring um, from the Butlers here in Austin. And um, so we're very happy to name the School of Music after them. And uh, this is the time of year. It's late August where we're starting to get uh, ready to get started up again. So the question of the day really sort of surfaces around kind of where you are, what you're doing, and, and do you like new beginnings? Is there something fun about the beginning of a new school year? And uh, those of you I know who are out there that are teachers or performers, you probably are in the same position. So today's question is, um, what do you have planned for this year? What are you hoping to do different or do better? I'm going to try to answer that question as well. So until next time, thanks for watching.